Uh, I started a long time ago. So I'm, I'm a senior level building official at this point. And like I say, I did the plan review for the city of Reno. I was the supervisor of all the plan review in Reno. Mm -hmm. uh, this position requires long distance traveling within White Pine County. Approximately 30% of the time is spent traveling. Does this pose any issue for you? No. No, actually, I prefer, uh, like I said, I like to multitask, so I get out in the field if I can uh, quite often and do plan review. I do the building official position. So traveling is not an issue. I, I prefer to get out and about and see what's happening in their own county. Okay. Uh, what areas, if any, do you feel you may be lacking as a building official or inspector? Well, I've got a lot of experience in, in the building department, so um, I don't see anything lacking there. I've gotten fully certified in all the, all the things we do in the building department. I've done all the jobs in the building department. Um, I, everybody can always use more training, of course, and continual training, and I could probably use more training on just a computer. You know, I use all the softwares, and wherever I've worked, uh, the software programs for permitting and inspections and so I've used a lot of the different software programs but you know the evolving uh, things happen in other words the codes evolve over three years the I code does and so we have to transition to that and so it's always a learning process and I think myself uh, I'll just spend more time with the computer than I'm used to I'm kind of a hands-on guy so being a contractor myself we haven't got the experience that some of the office people might have. So I would say just to keep training and also um, I'd like to go and get my uh, master code professional certification, which is the top of the line. Um, I'm almost there right now. I only need like one more certification to get that. So that's, that's the goal. Okay. Uh, the position requires you to be a resident of White Pine County. Will this be an issue for you? No, not at all. I'm just by myself. I have one dog after my wife passed away a couple of years ago now. So it's just me. I'm very flexible. I went from where I'm at close to Reno right now. It's where I have a home here, but I also went to Jackson, Wyoming. I can certainly come to Ely and I'd be glad to do that and be part of the community. Okay. Uh, the last question we have is what would you describe as your goals five years from now or your five year outlook? Yeah, I'd just like to be the one that's there to help people, you know, to serve the community. I believe that we're public servants, and I'd love to be able to work uh, in the community for that long, uh, to feel real good about the contributing, you know, the experience I have, and the education I have in this field. And I would feel good about just staying on, on board there for the rest of my career, which is, I expect to be at least five years or more. Okay. Uh, another question that our HR director would like us to just confirm with you on your application that says you're available January 1st of 2021. Is that you're available anytime to start if you were hired? Pretty much, yes. I just need a short, you know, week or two. Uh, is all I need to together my things to come back here. Okay. Any other questions from the council or follow up issues on those? Okay, Mr. Green, um, if, do you have any questions for us that you'd like to ask? Uh, no, just did you have someone retire or what was the opening, what was the reason for the opening? Yeah, our, our current building official gave us notice of retirement. I see. Okay, I was just curious. Okay, I'm available if you need anything else. So okay, anytime, well, just feel free. Feel free, and I appreciate your time tonight. Well, we appreciate your time. You're welcome to stay on the line. Uh, we've got one more um, interview to do if, if they're there. Jesus. Okay. Last, sorry. Last candidate, Joseph Penkowski, has not responded to my text, and he's apparently not on the line. So. Okay. La last call for Joseph Penkowski. If you're anywhere listening, please unmute yourself. If not, we'll just move on from there. So. We'll then close this interview agenda item. Let's see, we're on item 3-1, and we'll move on to item 3-2. Which
which is uh, Mayor Robertson discussion for possible action, appointment of individual from interviewed applicants as city building official and determination of salary. Jeanette? Um, I guess at this point, I'm not sure that we put them back on I can't put them in the waiting room for the discussion. Um, I don't care if they're listening. It's still I didn't know if that's, that's which way it worked. <laughs> so they, they just won't be able to participate uh, okay. with anything that they can, because it's still a public meeting, they can participate with Okay. Perfect. 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 So the, the floor is open to the, the council. We've interviewed three candidates here and have applications for four. Um, three now. But at this time, you know, I can make a statement here. You know, I think we've had some incredible qualified candidates apply for this position, which I'm pretty shocked at. Uh, you know, I'm leaning really heavily into this the platform we talked to uh, Jim Green and Mike. When he answered all the questions, his uh, long term goals, his, all of them were qualified. But um, I'm right now, I'm really leaning to Jim Green. I scored well, and he's got his wife's candidate for right now. Uh, Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. I'd like to uh, echo the same thing. It's, uh, I'm impressed on the candidates we had applied for this job. Knowing that we're out here in the boondocks, I'm glad to hear people still like the rural area. I too, I, I went through a, a point system, and I have to throw my top points to Mr. Green also. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Any other members? So, so do we um, need to discuss salary at this point as well? Yes. Maybe, I think we should have them split some way. If we look to move on that, then we have to be ready to go. I guess we can do salary. Don't bring him on. Should we vote for evidently? I couldn't quite hear him. If it, uh, while, he said while we discuss salary, could we have them not, input? No, not be a part of that conversation? No, oh, they can't. would be a part of it. They have to be part of the whole meeting, but I'm thinking. So I, I moved it to, to offer it to Mr. Green. And then the way I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, and Shane, but they'll, we'll need a motion from a council member on the applicant and the salary. And then together. Together. Correct. So, um, but right now, I mean, there, there's no motion. The board's free to discuss. And there was a, a salary range that was um, implemented through the, the application process. And the uh, salary range was? I got right okay. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to mention how I came up with that was I went on the Nevada Transparency and looked at um, cities that were close to ours, and that was kind of the range that I saw through there. And is this your meeting? Yes. Okay. I have a question, I guess, for the attorney. I, I always thought this was an appointment by the mayor and voted on by the council. Is that no, incorrect? No, it's like a kind of, I try to tell you, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not spelled out that way in our code. And so you met and I discuss the potential of changing the code, but this particular position isn't spelled out that way in the current code. Okay. So it's that's what we're considering. One of those things in the code that have been. <laughs> we find that from time to time. Yeah. yeah. It is just that we couldn't get it into the home before we actually needed a building okay. official if we wanted and the train would walk around the stuff. Fair enough. Where are we at currently with the garage including the county size which is what thirty four thousand? Where where are we at? Weight wise? He's I need to say what technique. He's uh, just under 8,000. He was right around 78, between 78 and 78. Well, we could offer this gentleman, let's say, 65 to 70,000, which would probably make it worthwhile for him to come this direction. That's comfortable in your budget. Oh, yes. Yes. 
I think 65,000 is way too low for somebody that has to be, have this many qualifications. Good. So what do you like to vote? Oh, I would, I would suggest nothing less than 75. All right. I'm more happy with that as well. I, uh, Madam HR Treasurer, <laughs> this, uh, county's involved in this too. What do we decide tonight, including the salary? It just rolled on into the contract. The contract is what it is right now. It's 2023. Yeah, I know maybe when the contract was first originally put together, he based it off of trying to pay half of it, but they've only increased it, I think, by 2% each year. And I'm, to be honest with you, I'm not sure, Press, the history of it. I know that uh, at one time, Brad gave back some money. And so his wage was lower, but I don't think it's ever changed um, since then. Okay, so you don't feel it would be a problem because it's lower. Councilwoman Beecher's requesting or proposing is lower than what we're currently paying anyway. So. Yes, but not by a whole lot. Okay, currently paying thirty-four thousand a year. Yeah, but it's 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 set up as they're paying for a service. They're not yeah, paying they're paying for, for a service. service. They're not part of the hiring process because. We're hiring and paying them, and we're providing them a service under the contract. Okay, thank you. Um, then I would make a motion to extend the position to Jim Green at $75,000. Is there anything else that needs to go into that opportunity? I mean, there's a standard benefits. No, but I could give him the standard benefits if he accepts the position and what we offer. That's the best benefits. I'll second Michelle's motion to hire Mr. Green at seventy-five thousand plus benefits. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I I guess we would vote on that and then talk to Mr. Green, or do we talk to Mr. Green during discussion? So you can vote on that and then talk to Mr. Green. Okay. If there's no other discussion, I will call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, Mr. Green, if you could unmute yourself. Um, you've been offered the position for $75,000 annually by the council. Is that acceptable to you? Okay, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> So, like I said, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Um, you've been offered the position by the council at seventy-five thousand dollars annual salary. Is is that acceptable? And would you accept that position? Well, I would really appreciate that, and thank you very much. Uh, yes, it is. Okay. So uh, we'll have you in touch with our HR uh, person and get that going. Thank you for your application, and we look forward to working. Well, thank with you. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, and first, certainly, I uh, appreciate all your help and time. I'd like to thank all the applicants for that. You guys did a great job. Uh, Definitely. Like a lot of experience with the today. Thank you guys very much for applying to come to EUA. Uh, maybe next time. We've certainly had some of the most like, mo most qualified applicants that have any to put up. I would like to echo that. So. Um, with that, we'll move on to item four, public comment. Uh, please state your name for the record, and you will have three minutes. Is there anybody on the Zoom who'd like to make public comment? Hearing none, is there, is there anybody in the room who has public comment? Concern on Ogden and Crawford. I have a picture of that. 11 and a half feet off the property line. You have a problem there. It needs to be addressed, and I'll submit that to you. Mr. Mayor, the building on my property, for my property at 490 High Street, has yet to be corrected. The City Council has been told that repeatedly. There were vehicles on the property that were uh, removed. The vehicles uh, were not <coughs> parked alongside the street. I want those vehicles back. I want to know who gave permission for them to be removed from my property and who it was that removed them. 
Where are those vehicles located now? I told former Mayor Van Camp at the August 9th, 2018 City Council meeting that she and the City Council were selectively enforcing city codes by taking, removing, and or impounding people's vehicles. I requested and never received a detailed list of property owners that the city has taken vehicles from, the total vehicles taken from each property, the date the vehicles were taken, who took the vehicles away, where were they being stored, and was any person reimbursed for their loss, and how much were they given, if anything? I waited long enough, Mr. Mayor, and I'm tired of being stonewalled. I am again repeatedly asking for answers to my questions. Mr. Mayor, uh, at I believe it was the December 10th meeting, Council Malworth uh, brought forth at the uh, utility board meeting that the golf courses used approximately 111 million gallons of water and not paid for that. That needs to be addressed. The city uh, staff can't straighten out my bill and they let 111 million gallons of water go down the drain without being paid for. That's not going to get it. Prior to that, there was the duck pond. Prior to that, it was the uh, West End Trailer Park, which now uh, I think Mr. Motar owns. The railroad had a leak. They never paid for any of those services. And yet you come after me, and I'm telling you, that's elective enforcement. All I'm asking for is an accountant, and I'm not getting that. Give me a deal, detailed account. Mr. Mayor, you continuously have uh, squatters throughout the community, you put Mrs. Apicetti basically out of business at her trailer park, yet uh, here's a recent picture, January 2nd, RV set up in the street, has their uh, satellite dish up, no problem. There is a problem. You can't keep selectively enforcing the law. I've gotten two citations for having people on my property, and yet Mr. Carson has, uh, I think I gave you that, had an RV on there, no permit. Stop the selective enforcement, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, uh, I gave you a variety of concerns over a year ago. I've not received an answer. Thank you, George. Any other public comment? Here in the city now, I will make a motion for adjournment. So, move on. You got one of the two. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. All in This has been a Georgetown production, George Chat just reporting.